Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Bernie Nussbaum. Our wonderful guest back today is investigative journalist and congressional candidate, Laura Loomer, joining us uh, from across the globe. Welcome back, Laura. Thanks for having me. So let's begin by talking about the daughter of your favorite congresswoman, Ilhan Omar, and I'm referring to uh, Isra Hersey, her 18-year-old daughter who fancies herself a climate activist and a communist. She has just added the communist hammer and sickle to her Twitter bio, and she's openly calling, get this, for a communist revolution. She right. co-founded the U.S. Ruth Youth Climate Strike and has gotten just fawning coverage from the press. So this self-styled communist revolutionary also writes her mom's tweets in some cases, and she espouses communism that killed well over a hundred million people in the last century. So is her mom a communist too? <laughs> so what's interesting here is what we're seeing play out is what's called the red green alliance or the Marxist jihadi alliance. And so you see Marxists and communists, they form and they have been forming these deep ties and alliances to uh, these jihadi Muslims like Ilhan Omar, uh, because they share the same end goal, which is ultimately the downfall of Western civilization and the erosion and destruction of the American constitution and American values. And so it's no surprise to me that uh, Ilhan Omar, who is a jihadist, and of course we know that her daughter shares her jihadi views and sentiments because she herself has posted tweets in the past, uh, you know, uh, praising uh, Muslim Brotherhood officials and also, um, uh, you know, advocating in support of uh, the violent rioters in Minneapolis and Antifa and Biala, many of whom are Somali radical Muslim migrants. And this isn't the first time her daughter has, uh, you know, had some controversy with regards to her own Twitter account. If you recall during the BLM riots in Minneapolis, uh, when uh, rioters and domestic terrorists were threatening to burn down the police station, uh, her daughter actually uh, tweeted and called on comrades to bring supplies uh, to the anarchists who were trying to burn down the Minneapolis police department. And so, I would say that uh, just like her mother, she's a Marxist jihadist. So Laura, explain this to me because I'm just too dense to follow. How is it possible that people like you and me know about this and it's not in the press? She literally wants to destroy America, not dissimilar from her own mother. She's calling for a communist overthrow of the United States government. And the press just loves her. Yeah, well, of course, the press the press uh, shares the same values as Ilhan Omar, right? Well, just last week, what, what was the press doing? They were uh, being cheerleaders for Hamas, just like Ilhan Omar. We found out that the Associated Press and Reuters and Al Jazeera and other uh, media entities were actually sharing office space with Hamas terrorists. <laughs> When I went to Minnesota, I confronted Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and I asked them to condemn Hamas. They refused to do it. So it's no surprise that the media is going to be praising not only the Jew-hating, Hamas-loving, terror-supporting congresswoman, but also her spawn who espouse and share the same radical Marxist jihadist viewpoints. <laughs> and what I find to be really uh, funny about this whole situation is that apparently, right, Apparently, the Ivy League institutions of, um, you know, of, of our country, uh, they have so much animosity towards white people, they have so much animosity towards conservatives. But if you're a Marxist jihadist like Ilhan Omar's daughter, where is she going to be going to school? Well, she's going to be attending Columbia University. And an interesting fact about Columbia University that some people may not know, in 2015, and I'm sure it's only gotten worse since then. Uh, David Horowitz's uh, Freedom Center uh, released a report about the most anti-Semitic universities in the country. And he found that uh, Cornell and Columbia were some of the top two most anti-Semitic uh, colleges, universities in America. So it's no surprise that uh, the Jew-hating Muslim Congresswoman's daughter will be attending an anti-Semitic school. Well, we, you and I will keep mentioning it. So speaking of Hamas, Laura, uh, in the month of May, I know this number is staggering, 
Hamas launched over 4,000 explosive rockets into Israel, targeting exclusively civilian populations to create the maximum amount of damage, deaths, and terror. So after they were starting to run low on rockets, uh, well, they started demanding a ceasefire to the war that they started unilaterally. Israel agreed, and now there's a ceasefire. Here's what I really don't get. Maybe you can explain it to me. Hamas starts a war. Israel defends itself and strikes Hamas military targets in Gaza almost exclusively. Now, the world is lining up to send boatloads of cash to Hamas. So far, over a billion dollars in aid has been pledged, including a very big pile of money from Joe Biden's White House. Why yeah. is the world responding like this, literally giving gifts based on terror created by the they want to they want to see the eradication and the destruction of of um of israel and so joe biden of course it would be it would be very radical right it would be extremely radical for joe biden um in his position as the you know illegitimate installed so-called president of the united states uh to call for um all aid for you know to israel to be cut off because uh traditionally it's been a bipartisan agreement to give uh, to, to give aid and assistance to Israel, our greatest ally in the Middle East. Uh, one of the first things that Joe Biden did, of course, upon uh, assuming office was he eradicated uh, the travel ban to radical Islamic countries and then immediately reinstalled aid to the Palestinians, which was something that was reversed during the Trump administration out of respect for the Taylor Force Act, because the Palestinians were using American aid to reward and give stipends to the family members of terrorists who murdered American citizens and Israelis. And so what this is, is it's just a way for uh, the Democrats and global leaders to, uh, without, without overtly saying we are going to give money to Hamas, right, which you cannot do because Hamas is recognized as a designated Islamic terrorist organization in our country. They're just going to give this aid for development purposes. Uh, but we all know, <laughs> we all know it's not a coincidence. The aid is going to go towards purchasing more rockets. And when you do the math of, you know, the 4,000 rockets that were fired into Israel, I wonder what's, what's the mathematical breakdown? How many rockets can you purchase with $235 million? Because it's not a coincidence that Hamas was able to fire 4,000 rockets directly after receiving $235 million in aid from Joe Biden. Well, the, the analysis I've read out of Israel says those rockets cost at the maximum, the long range rockets, Laura, $500. So 200 million? divided by 500 you get a gazillion rockets if they Well and we know them. and we know that we know that it's not just going to end with firing rockets out of Gaza um, into Israel of course uh, the leaders of Hamas just released a statement the other day uh, saying that they have 10,000 foot soldiers on the ground in Israel so they're talking about how they have Hamas terrorists who have infiltrated Israeli um, Israeli society Israeli communities and who knows, you know, who knows what they're going to do. Um, but uh, but they clearly aren't just going to stop with firing rockets um, from Gaza into, into Israel. So Israel pulled out of Gaza in 2005. And one of the talking points that the um, famous people were parroting as if it was a fact was that what do you expect? Gaza is occupied territory. There's not one single Jew living there, not one single Israeli soldier, not one single Israeli inside the territory, um, except for a couple of dead bodies of soldiers that Hamas refuses to return so they can be buried um, with the rest of their families in cemeteries in Israel. Why in the world is that talking point not ridiculed in the press? It is the opposite literally the definitional opposite of occupied territory, it's been abandoned by Israel to the Hamas government. 
Well, the press, is, the press is inherently left leaning, right? And we know that uh, the Democrat Party, as as uh, President Trump has famously said, is the party of Jew haters and Israel haters. We know that the the press in America is a propaganda arm for the Democrat Party. Uh, we know that they are terror sympathizers. And now, uh, you know, thanks to what just happened in in Israel with this conflict between. Israel and the Palestinians, we learned and we have evidence that American and, and foreign media entities that constantly demonize and falsely accuse Israel of being an apartheid state or call Gaza occupied territory, they were literally sharing office space with Hamas terrorists. And then they denied it. They denied it. And then when there were calls for an investigation, the Secretary of State said there wasn't any evidence. Well, how do you how do you rule out no evidence if you're not even going to do an investigation? And so, um, you know, it's beyond just ignorance at this point in time. Uh, I'm sure a lot of these people have been to Israel. If they haven't, then they can go for themselves and see that uh, there's no such thing as apartheid or occupation when you have Muslims serving in the military in Israel, when you have Muslims serving in the Knesset, right? When you have Muslims integrated in society, working alongside, educating their children with, and participating in society with, with uh, other Israeli Jews. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's far more sinister than that because they are quite literally sharing space and breaking bed with, bread with terrorists, as we, as we just learned two weeks ago. Absolutely. So in a similar vein, discussing the United States foreign policy, Iran is now enriching uranium to levels that only countries building nuclear weapons use. In other words, they're at 60% enrichment where if you're using uranium for civilian purposes, you're at two to 3%. So Iran is enriching uranium at 20 times, 20 times civilian uses. So obviously they're building nuclear weapons. It's no longer a secret and nobody disputes it. So why in the world, if you have any idea, is America begging Iran to come back to the JCPOA so Iran can be um, removed from the sanctioned bad boy list and start receiving billions in funds coming in, starting with a big check from Joe Biden's White House. Why are we doing that this in the face the, of a weapons program? This goes back to what I described as the uh, Marxist jihadi alliance. Okay, these people are working hand in hand to destroy Western civilization, to destroy American values, and to eradicate Israel. Those are their top three goals. And their fourth goal, of course, is to establish a global Islamic caliphate. Well, what does Joe Biden do? Well, he gives the Palestinians $235 million in aid right? He, he ends the travel ban to radical Islamic nations, opening our borders so that these radicals can come here, okay, and further destabilize our country. Now, another one of the first things he did upon assuming office was he called for re-engagement with Iran and, uh, you know, renegotiations, as you just said. <laughs> the only reason to engage with people who chant death to America and death to Israel and have stated on numerous occasions their plans to use nuclear weapons or nuclear technology to eradicate Israel, to kill Jews and to kill Americans is to help them complete their goal. And, uh, you know, it's very sinister what is happening right now. And uh, this is something that Barack Hussein Obama did, right? As our first Muslim president, he himself obviously had a lot of sympathies towards these uh, Islamists and the Marxist Jihadist Alliance. He uh, really uh, catalyzed this, uh, this concept of civilization jihad, which we're watching unfold in our country right now. And the Joe Biden administration as I've said numerous times before, is just a third term extension of the Barack Hussein Obama administration. And we're watching it before our eyes. Laura, thanks for coming on today. Where can people follow you and learn about what you're doing? Uh, well, uh, people can go to my website, loomerd.com. That's loomerd.com. I'm also running for Congress in Florida's 21st Congressional District, which is the most Jewish district in America. And if people want to learn more about my campaign, they can go to lauraloomerforcongress.com. You won't be able to find me on social media uh, because I'm banned everywhere, uh, but you can go to my website and send me an email. Great. And for those of you out there in ATP land that haven't yet subscribed to our text message alert system, please do that now. It's very simple. Just take your cell phone, type the message 
truth, T-R-U-T-H in the message box and send it to the number 88202, push send. You'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of our content on your cell phone, absolutely free, including everything we do with Laura Luna. For ATP Report, thanks for joining us. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thank <laughs> you.